Hi everybody, my name is Rhonda and I'm a nurse in the ER and I put together this video to give some tips on how to survive being an ER nurse for those who are maybe new to the field or just want to see someone else's input on the a situation or the career choice. So I'm going to start at number 10. For number 10, I want to say my first tip is to just try it. Have an open mind. Um, you never know what you'll be good at or what's for you until you give it a try with an open mind and an open heart. Some people say like you need med surge experience before ER, but I think that it would have definitely helped me because it helps with time management and just seeing the different pathophysiologies um, of the disease process later versus when we see them in the acute phase in the ER. Um, so I feel like bed surge would have been really helpful, but I didn't come to the ER with any bedside experience. I came actually from psych. So I was a newbie all over again. And I'm thriving, guys. I'm still making it two and a half years into it and strong. So I just say give it a try. Number nine, be prepared. Um, the ER is a very fast paced place and you need to have the things that you need readily available. So I say, of course, the stethoscope. Um, if someone's coming into respiratory distress or an asthmatic, you need to be able to assess their lung fields to um, properly assess the patient trauma shears you're gonna be cutting something in the ER during some period of your shift. And if you don't, then it was probably a good day. They can't get fancy, but just a regular old pair will do. I got mine actually when I was in orientation for a new facility. Um, I got them free. Uh, mine was from Fight, Flight for Life. And um, I've been having them ever since I started my career in the ER. Now I do want some Raptors hint, hint, on my Christmas list, on my Christmas list to any of my family or friends watching. <laughs> Um, also I keep a fanny pack guys like I know fanny packs are coming back in it's the highest trend but I use it for my work life and it has made it so much better um, I'm not having to double back as much especially I was new to my facility so I didn't know where everything was if you guys want a video for me to show or go more into detail what I keep in my fanny pack then just um, listen in the comments and I do not mind making that video at all um, so my next tip would be number eight, which is a support system. You need a support system at work. Um, you need that a nurse or anybody who that you can come to who's open and can answer questions or you feel comfortable with, you know, voicing concerns or opinions or just asking for their advice on something um, or else it's going to be really stressful if you just try to bottle it all in and just hold that anxiety to yourself because in the beginning you're going to question everything you're going to be nervous and nerve-wracked so having that support system there is going to be the difference between if you stay or if you go so that ties into seven you also need a good support system at home because um, as nurses we put a lot into our patients and you know uh, trying to settle their fears and their anxiety and you know not make a mistake and you know, be knowledgeable and be this um, awesome nurse, you know, that we put a lot into our job and into our patients and we need somebody to fill that cup as well. We need someone to put as much love and dedication into us as well. So I said that that is very important. Also, for number six, I would say it's okay to feel completely dumb or feel very overwhelmed within the first six months. I didn't get comfortable in the ER too about a year and a half and that might sound discouraging but please do not let that discourage you because uh, that's normal it's normal and it sucks to think if you're starting now that it's going to take a whole year and a half for you to be comfortable no it's um you're going to make so much progression um there i mean at that year mark and at that year and a half mark that you're going to be like wow you know you know i'm really getting better at this or i don't feel like a complete idiot. Now you're always gonna have questions, but you're gonna be able to answer some of your own questions, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it's okay, you know, just give yourself time and allow yourself to grow and never, I mean, at, um, a year into it, especially if you're a new nurse, you should never feel just comfortable in your position. You should always, I mean, you throughout your whole career, you need to be on your toes, but if you're feeling confident, um, 
and just think that you know it all or have the answers, I would really be kind of questioning you as a person. <laughs> so um, just be okay. You know, every day you learn something new. I've been doing it for two and a half years and I learn something new every day. And it can be minor. as minor. Well, not minor, but like irrigating a foley. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's okay. Uh, number five, I would say answer your questions. Answer the questions to your fears. For example, I was always scared um, as a new uh, bedtime nurse giving antibiotics IV because when you ask someone their allergies, it's always some type of, most of the time, some type of antibiotics. And you know, knowing, okay, is this in the family of that? Or if they're allergic to that, will they have a reaction to this? Like I was completely anxious all the time. I would be like staring at them like, are you feeling short of breath? Are you itchy? <laughs> and then so I was talking to a nurse and she was like, okay, if they did start breaking out, what would you do? just hives or at the site, you would give Benadryl. Okay, I was like, okay, yeah. Or if they had a severe reaction, an adverse reaction, and when it's an anaphylactic shock, I know that you will give Epi sub Q, you know? And I mean, it'll be something that we'll need to get all hands on deck because it's serious, but once you know what to do when the unexpected happens, it kind of settles your stomach a little bit. So especially like, again, for morphine, if you're giving morphine and your patient's like, I feel pressure in my chest, you're not going to freak out because you're going to know that that's a side effect and that's a normal feeling when you're giving the medication versus an adverse reaction. So kind of just knowing your medications or if medications is a fear for you. Some people are good at pharm pharmacology, so that might not be their fear. So just answer <laughs> your fears and what to do if that situation happens. So... On another note, number four is always double check. In ER, sometimes you won't always be scanning medications um, or things will happen really fast because of the high acuity of the patients or how fast things go. It's really easy to make a mistake and that's really scary. And I know that that made me the slower nurse um, starting out because I double checked and triple checked everything. And I've even still made a mistake myself, you know, but I learned from that mistake. And I never let um, the ER or the number uh, in the waiting room or anything like that rush me to the point that I make uh, an error and could that could affect my patient. So um, just double check, triple check, always check. Um, which brings me to the meat of this video. Like this is the really good scoop coming up. Number three, know your texts, love your texts, and cherish them, okay? So your texts are going to be your legs because they can help you do things like, you know, things that are time-consuming that slows down the process when you have already so much to do, like getting a patient on and off a of bedpan, um, going and running a urinalysis, or, you know, if in your facility they're able to put in an IV and draw labs, like, oh my God, some facilities don't allow their techs, which are paramedics and EMTs, to do IVs. I mean, but that's a whole nother video and that's a whole nother rant. But love them, cherish them, and treat them well. Do not use and abuse your techs um, because you will be shunned. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I feel like I build a rapport with my techs and they know my heart. Like if I'm really asking for help, then I need it and I'm being swamped. Otherwise, if it's most stuff that I can do myself, you know, then I mean, I'll get it. I mean, you know, know what you can delegate as well because people should, you know, do their job and what's in their job description to make everything work well. But also, you know, you can do some of the things yourself. So <laughs> I digress. Don't abuse your takes, love them and build a rapport. And this also ties into number two, um, who to know. You need to know, for me, now I'm not degrading anybody's position or the role that they play in the ER because everybody plays a part to make it all go smoothly. Um, but for me, the respiratory ther therapists are like amazing. They see so much. I mean, they have like a pretty important job when you say they protect the airway. <laughs> so you kind of need that. So I would say like, they see all the codes. They run all the codes in the ER and also they're part of the rapid response team. So they go to the codes on the floor. So if you ever get in a bond or in the middle of a code or whatever, they I'm pretty sure they can throw the hints and drop like what 
they know how this show should run because they are very observant. So know your respiratory therapist and create that bond. The unit secretary, I mean, I can't come up with enough examples to tell you how valuable your unit secretary is because I mean they normally are buddy or go hand in hand with the charge nurse so they know how things are supposed to go and how the facility runs and like they have their hands in a little bit of everything so they are a great resource to ask questions and don't ever think oh that's just a unit secretary or something or they're not medical or anything like that because you will be selling yourself short honey love your unit secretary and then know your providers. You'll kind of learn how they work up patients, what medications they like to give, and things of that nature. So once you get to know them and can kind of anticipate their moves, it'll help you kind of stay one step ahead. So, um, but that just varies uh, between providers. Um, and you'll get to know them, and that just takes a little bit of time. Uh, most of the time I haven't, you know, met anybody who's chunked the clipboard in my head or anything or yelled at me or made me cry. So mo they're very approachable and most of the time willing to um, teach, especially in the ER. Like they love, especially ask questions about like EKGs and the interpretations if that's not a strong point. Like they will explain in the easiest ways. So that brings me to number one, guys, the golden nugget of this video. Ask questions. Isn't that simple? Just always ask questions. There's never a dumb question. If there's a dumb question, so what? You got an answer to it. Keep it moving. Keep it pushing. You know, and uh, asking questions is going to allow you to get to know people in your department. You're going to know who your ICU nurses are, especially when you have to do a critical drip because um, they're going to have experience with that or electrolyte replacements, protocols, you know, um, things of that nature. Or if you have a OB patient, you know, who's worked in labor delivery, you know, who can help you with that with the fetal heart tones? Um, the med surge nurses are so great. I always ask them about Foley's. It's crazy because like the irrigations and things of that nature, boy, they can unclog a Foley. <laughs> Most nurses who have a uh, med surge experience or they just have a lot of knowledge and especially can help you with your time management if you feel like that's something you're lacking. So I hope this video um, helped somebody, you know, I hope you can take something away from it. If you disagree or take nothing from it, um, then give me some advice or drop some tips and tricks of your tips and tricks or um, comments below so that I can learn something new. Because I feel like nursing is um, a big community and I feel like we need to uplift each other. And I'm pretty sure that there's somebody else searching videos to help them, you know, feel like they didn't make the wrong choice going into nursing or even going into the ER. So I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about it. So have a good day and save lives. <laughs>